Knowing Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks, they're likely to pull off an upset as an underdog in 2023. And I think the most likely upset could come against the Tennessee Volunteers. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to this Friday edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and also a lead staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. Thank you so much for making the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. South Carolina has got a brutal stretch of games that they're going to have to play in the 2023 season. And when looking at this schedule, I had a few superlatives that I came up with for a few specific games that we're going to touch on with today's edition of Lockdown Gamecocks. And the first one I want to discuss is the most likely upset the Gamecocks could pull off as an underdog. And when I say as an underdog, I mean nationally, pretty much everywhere, maybe outside the state of South Carolina, the Gamecocks are not going to be viewed as the favorite. And the games in which South Carolina are most likely to be labeled an underdog, the team, though most likely upset, in my opinion, is the Tennessee Volunteers. Now, I know that you can make an argument for a couple of specific teams. You could possibly make an argument for the Clemson game. Maybe, maybe you can make an argument for the Georgia game, albeit I think that would be a pretty far stretch in that circumstance. But I think that Tennessee, in all honesty, is the most likely opponent here that could be upset by an underdog-labeled South Carolina squad. I feel like everyone outside of South Carolina, especially Tennessee fans, for obvious reasons, are expecting the script to be completely flipped from last season. I think that there's a couple of narratives that have already been trickled out there regarding the South Carolina-Tennessee game. South Carolina, obviously, they blew out Tennessee this past fall, and they did so in a fashion that's rarely ever been seen by the Gamecocks. And so... A lot of people are going to look at that game as a potential outlier, which would be fair, but some are going to take it to a point where they feel like that it was almost, well, Tennessee had to have slept walk going into that game instead of South Carolina just playing their best game all season long. Some people are going to assume that Tennessee is going to come out firing in this game, that they are going to be out for blood, so to speak, because obviously they're embarrassed about what happened this past year and that the motivation from that game and their emotion alone could be enough to, again, lead them flipping the script and blowing out South Carolina this time around. And there's also some that might quietly assume that the Gamecocks are going to come in a bit overconfident. Now, let's take a couple of those points and go even further into this game. Why could the Gamecocks upset the Tennessee Volunteers as a likely underdog going into the game? Well, first of all, the Gamecocks are going to be coming into this game more battle-tested on the field than the Volunteers will have been at that point in the 2023 season. When you look at South Carolina's first four games, which is against North Carolina in Charlotte, then a home game against Furman, then a road game at Georgia, and then coming back home to play Mississippi State, the combined record of those four opponents from 2022 is 43 and 12. Pretty brutal stretch to start the season for South Carolina based on last year's results. So, a couple things could happen here. South Carolina could either come into the game feeling like that they have found a rhythm and are gaining confidence, or they could be beaten, battered, and bruised by the time they go to Knoxville because of some of the games that they're having to play early on in the month of September. You compare that with Tennessee's first four opponents on the schedule, which are the Virginia Cavaliers, whom they'll play in Nashville, Tennessee, Austin P. 
a road game at Florida, and then UTSA right before the game against South Carolina. The combined record from those four opponents this past season was 27 and 21. Not terrible, but obviously nowhere near to the level of South Carolina's first four opponents on their schedule. And that kind of leads me into my next point for why South Carolina could upset Tennessee as an underdog, which is both teams are replacing multiple key offensive pieces. Hear me out real quick. South Carolina, as everyone has talked about this offseason for the most part, has obviously lost a bunch of important pieces on the offensive side of the ball. Guys like Marshawn Lloyd, tight end Nate Atkins, wide receivers Jalen Brooks and Josh Van, do-it-all utility player Jaheim Bell, and offensive lineman Javon Gwynn and Eric Douglas. However, what has not been discussed as much is the fact that Tennessee has also lost some very important offensive pieces from this past fall. The big name, obviously, is Hendon Hooker at quarterback. And if that didn't already hurt enough, the Volunteers also lost Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman, arguably their top two wide receivers when both of those guys were on the field at the same time. They also lost two important offensive line pieces in Darnell Wright and Jerome Carvin, with Wright being a first-round draft pick in the NFL draft a month ago. So taking this back to my first point, South Carolina's offense could already be more battle-tested coming into this game compared to Tennessee's offense, which means that South Carolina may have already discovered some issues with the offense and had more of a chance to see what kinks they need to work out compared to Tennessee. Tennessee, again, is not really going to be tested all that much in these first four weeks, besides probably their road game against Florida, and sure, maybe a bit of a scare from the UTSA Roadrunners, but nowhere near to the extent that South Carolina is going to face, again, in their first four games of the season. Now, getting into my final point for why South Carolina could upset Tennessee as a likely underdog heading into that contest. The Volunteers could very well come into this game far too psyched up, creating a reverse effect for them early on in this game. Tennessee, again, fans from that side are already assuming that because of what will happen this past fall, how they're going to be motivated, how much anger and frustration that is going to rise from inside of them because of what all happened this past fall is going to automatically put Tennessee over the top and then some against South Carolina. But as we all know, with these 18 to 22 year old college football players, there is such thing as getting too emotional in a football game, getting a little bit too jacked up. Tennessee returns six starters on their defense from this past season and they returned multiple guys that started at least six-plus games in the defensive backfield, including a lot of guys that played in that South Carolina game this past November. Those guys clearly are going to be going into that game looking for some retribution. There's no question about that. But here's what's also not going to be talked about. The pressure from the fan base. The fan base is going to expect Tennessee to win this game. And not just win this game, but win it handedly. Also, what if South Carolina gets off to a good start? What if Spencer Rattler comes out firing again, scores two, three touchdowns in the first 20, 25 minutes of this game in the air? That could resurrect the memories of this past fall. In which case, Tennessee's defense, who knows? They could react in a very negative way. They could sit there trying to figure out what's going on. They could start pointing the finger at one another. And before you know it, South Carolina is already in the players' heads. And that is something that you never want to have happen for a football team. But in this case for South Carolina, it would totally work out in their favor if that's how the game started out. And sure, as I admitted earlier, there is a possibility that South Carolina could come into the game a little bit overconfident after what all happened last season. But in my opinion, I think that it's a little bit easier to channel confidence more so than it is 
to channel anger and frustration. So for South Carolina, I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to win at Tennessee, but there is certainly a path to the Gamecocks upsetting the Volunteers as a nationally perceived underdog going into that contest. Now, that is the most likely upset that could take place for South Carolina in 2023. But what game could sneak up on the Gamecocks? Which game do Gamecock fans need to look out for the most when we get to the fall? I'm going to dive into that game plus the toughest matchup overall that the Gamecocks will have to deal with this upcoming season coming up right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are a pair of shorts that, honestly, if you do not have them in your life, you need to change that right this second. Bird Dogs offer everything that you want when it comes to clothing. They're going to be extremely comfortable. You can literally wear these anywhere that you want, any sort of event. It's versatile. It's going to fit you well. These shorts, I promise you, they're going to absolutely change your life. You're never going to want to go back to the old shorts that you used to have in your drawer before you got bird dogs. And for me, I'm really excited because I'm going to get to go on vacation with my family in around a month or so. And I can promise y'all when I'm down there at the beach, I'm going to want to bring my bird dogs with me because I can lounge around in them. I can go out to the beach and get in the water in bird dogs. And I can also wear these to a restaurant. You could do about anything in bird dogs. And that is why they are the best shorts of the summer. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on college right now to get bird dogs today. And when you enter the promo code locked on college, bird dogs will throw in a free custom Yeti style tumbler with every order that you make. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. Let's talk about the biggest trap game for Shane Beamer and the South Carolina Gamecocks in 2023. And a lot of people have immediately pointed to that Mississippi State game because, well, it is sandwiched between two pivotal road games for South Carolina in the Georgia Bulldogs and the Tennessee Volunteers. And sure, it might make a lot of sense on the face of it, but when you really look deeper into the schedule, the biggest trap game for the 2023 season is not the Mississippi State game. No way. It's actually the Kentucky game for South Carolina. Now, why is that the case? Well, there's a couple of reasons here. First of all, this game is going to take place the week before the Palmetto Bowl against the Gamecocks arch rivals in the Clemson Tigers. South Carolina, obviously, look, they're not going to overlook Tennessee. They're certainly going to hold a lot of importance with that game. But when it comes to the Clemson game, it just means something much deeper for South Carolina. That is the kind of game where if you've got an opponent that maybe you've beaten the previous year or maybe one that you just don't respect as much the week before that matchup against your arch rivals, then yeah, you could see how it could turn to a trap game for you very quickly. Even if you're hosting the team in the friendly confines of your own stadium. Mississippi State, if you were to say that was the biggest trap game, here's my hypothetical. South Carolina is likely going to be coming off of a loss to the Georgia Bulldogs. A loss that's going to sting, a loss that's obviously going to be painful and hurt the team, and they're going to come back home the following week, and they're going to want to take out their anger from that loss against Georgia against the Mississippi State Bulldogs, and again, they are playing them at home. It's not like they're going straight to Starkville after playing a game in Athens. Here's the other thing. Going back to the Kentucky game real quick, the two opponents that South Carolina have to play before the Kentucky game are Jacksonville State and Vanderbilt. 
Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that neither of those two teams could put a scare into South Carolina. Jacksonville State was a very good FCS program this past year, and Vanderbilt is a much improved program under the direction of Clark Lee. But again, likely you're going to win both of those games. You're going to probably win both of those games convincingly. And for South Carolina, it could end up leading to you sleepwalking into the Kentucky game, especially when, again, we talk about the fact that it is right before that Clemson game. Here's the other reason why the Kentucky game is the biggest trap game for South Carolina 2023. This is going to take place in the second to last week of the regular season. And if we all know Kentucky football at this point, then we know that Mark Stoops and his football team pride themselves on being physical. Now, it is one thing to just try to be physical on the football field. You can try to be as physical as much as you want. That doesn't mean that you're the better athlete. It doesn't mean that you're the better team overall. However, when you get everyone to buy into your culture, when you get everyone to buy into your program's overall MO on the football field, then you do automatically become a much more dangerous team, especially when you start to pair talent to go along with your overall mentality in your building. And Kentucky, in my opinion, is going to get back to that in 2023. Now, yes, they still got questions on that offensive line unit, a unit that has really treated the Wildcats well over the past several years up until 2022. But I like the skill position players that Kentucky has. I always am going to respect the defense that they've got because of defensive coordinator Brad White. It still shocks me that he has not gotten another job, maybe at a bigger program in the Power 5 ranks or even at the NFL. He's a very smart coach. He knows how to utilize his personnel quite well. So, Kentucky, again, another team that lost to South Carolina last season. They're going to be out for some revenge. They are going to try to punch South Carolina in the mouth. It's going to be late in this season. Likely, the Gamecocks will have some injuries on the roster to deal with at that point. And again, this all goes along with the fact that you're going to be playing the Clemson Tigers the very next week, your arch rivals. So when you consider all of this, let's say South Carolina's rush defense maybe isn't as improved as fans want to see this season. Kentucky, as much as the offensive line you might not, do so great in 2023. They got a pretty talented back in Ray Davis, who's going to be in that starting lineup. So you talk about that. You talk about their defense itself. Maybe they feast on South Carolina's offensive line. You could see how all of this could snowball and turn into a really bad scenario here for South Carolina. So when you combine all of those factors together, there's no question that the biggest trap game for South Carolina in 2023 will be when they take on the Kentucky Wildcats in Week 12 of the regular season. Now, real quickly, let's talk about the toughest game of the season here. There's a reason why I saved this bit for last, because uh, quite frankly, uh, there's no argument here to be made. It's not even close. It's the Georgia Bulldogs. South Carolina's going to be playing the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens. They won't be playing in Williams-Price like they were able to this past season. Yes, the Georgia Bulldogs are losing some important pieces. They do lose Stetson Bennett. They do lose tight end Darnell Washington. They again lose a ton of pieces in their defensive front. Here's the thing, y'all. As we should all know at this point, Georgia is not rebuilding their roster when they lose these kind of guys. They just simply reload. Their four-year recruiting class average as of right now sits at two and a half. They basically have either had the second best or third best recruiting class in the entire country over the past four years. That is absolutely absurd recruiting right there. You know what that also means? It means the Bulldogs have got depth. What's the one thing Sacramento still needs to build up in certain areas of their roster? They still got to build up some depth at certain positions. So you counter all that in with the fact that Again, they're going to be playing in Athens. The offensive line unit's a bit of a question mark. There's a couple of other minor question marks for the Gamecocks as well. I just don't think it bodes well for South Carolina. I think it is truly one of those games where it's like, if you play it out 100 times, Georgia's going to win 99 of them. Now, there is that one game, that one possibility where so many things go your way that you've got a shot to win at the end. But right now, in terms of South Carolina's potential to win against Georgia, I think that would require a lot of, I guess, luck 
to go your way. A lot of mistakes from Georgia's end if you're going to pull off the upset against the Bulldogs. So either way, my overall point, I just don't see it this year. The Georgia Bulldogs, by far, offer the toughest matchup for Shane Beamer and South Carolina in 2023. All right, before I get into the final portion of today's show, the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, I want to real quickly thank all of you everydayers for making us your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. If you want to become an everydayer of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, then be sure to give us a follow wherever you get your audio podcast daily, or if you watch the show on YouTube, feel free to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on future alerts and notifications on future shows from the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. All right, now let's get into some interesting recruiting news for Shane Beamer and South Carolina's football team that took place late Thursday night as South Carolina offered not one, not two, but three quarterbacks from the 2025 recruiting cycle. South Carolina, obviously, as I've talked about before on this show, they are in a very enviable position if you are another program because they've already got their quarterback for the 2024 class in Dante Reno, which means that they're able to expend some more energy and more time towards some of these prospects from the 2025 recruiting class. And it seems like based on Thursday night that Dow Lockett is really starting to dive headfirst into the talent pool for that cycle. So let's start off with the highest rated quarterback out of the group in Deuce Knight out of Loosedale, Mississippi. Some of you may recall that I've talked about Deuce a couple times on the show and I've mentioned him as one guy to watch in terms of quarterback targets for the Gamecocks in 2025. Well, now he's got the offer to go along with that. Deuce Knight is rated the sixth best quarterback and 85th best prospect overall in the entire country, according to On3's industry rankings. He has received a plethora of offers from teams like Ole Miss, Georgia, Auburn, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Notre Dame, Oregon, Miami, and several others. He's also put in a great Elite 11 camp performance that took place a couple of weeks ago that, from an athleticism standpoint, measured right up there with Anthony Richardson when he was in high school. And Deuce Knight has checked out South Carolina's football program before. He visited the Gamecocks for their spring game back on April the 15th. And when I had a quick conversation with him after that weekend, he told me that when South Carolina does offer him, they will be right up there in the mix and will be a major contender for him. So, the Gamecocks have now come forward with an offer to Deuce Knight. And while the Homestead Ole Miss Rebels and a couple of other programs probably already have a little bit of a head start here, it'll be interesting to see if South Carolina can really get their foot in the door here with the Mississippi native as we get further along in this recruitment. Now, another quarterback that the Gamecocks offered, Gamecock fans, you're going to love this one. A local kid in Will Wilson out of Richland Northeast High School in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, Wilson has yet to earn an industry ranking from On3 because he does not have a ranking yet from all of the major recruiting services out there. However, Will Wilson looks to be a kid that is going to be a Power 5 quarterback somewhere at the collegiate level. He's already got a couple of impressive offers from schools like Penn State, Arkansas, NC State, TCU, Cincinnati, and a couple of others as well. And now he could say that he's been offered by his home state team in the South Carolina Gamecocks. Wilson has visited South Carolina already on a couple of different occasions. Once during ball practice back in December and again for a junior day weekend this past January. So... It'll be really interesting to see how the Gamecocks handle the recruitment of Will Wilson. I went and watched some of his film from his sophomore season, and while it's too early to sort of make any sort of conclusions as to what kind of prospects these kids are going to be because they still have two whole years of high school football left to play, I do like some of the stuff that Will Wilson offers. I think that he's got some really good straight line speed that he offers as a dual threat quarterback, but Wilson is also a kid that can spin the football. He can make touch passes. He can make some throws on the run. He's got a decent arm already as well for being a true sophomore in high school. So again, going to be really interesting to see 
what Dallas Loggins and the staff choose to do with Will Wilson as this recruiting cycle continues to progress. And then the last quarterback that received an offer from the Gamecocks on Thursday night was Ryan Montgomery out of Finlay High School in Finlay, Ohio. Not very often the Gamecocks dip their feet into the state of Ohio, but um, Ryan Montgomery is a good prospect to pursue. This kid is rated the 14th best quarterback and 209th best prospect overall, according to On 3's industry rankings. And this kid has got offers from just about every single major college football program in the country. I'm talking programs like Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Auburn, Penn State, and plenty of others. Now, Montgomery did visit the South Carolina Gamecocks back on April the 4th, again, during the spring practice period. So he's not been here for necessarily a live game of some kind. And I do think that South Carolina is going to need to get him back on campus for multiple different visits in order to really get themselves in this race here because the home state Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines seem to be the two schools here that are out in front right now. He's visited Michigan, I believe, seven times and the Buckeyes on nine separate occasions. I will say this, based on the film, out of all three of these guys, Montgomery seems to be the best quarterback in terms of being able to throw the ball short, but also being able to put some touch and throw the ball deep down the field. He can throw the football at all three levels. He's got some escapability to him. Montgomery is going to be a good quarterback, from what I can tell. And I think all three of these guys could be good quarterbacks. So, South Carolina, they have got a really good early crop of targets here at the quarterback position, to say the least. And again, got a lot of time left to develop here with the 2025 cycle before. We maybe see which one is going to stick out the most for South Carolina. But again, certainly not a bad group to choose from in terms of trying to find their main target for the 2025 recruiting class. But with that being said, y'all, that is going to do it for today's show of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. In terms of games where South Carolina is likely to be viewed as an underdog nationally, which upset do you think the Gamecocks are most likely to pull off this next season? Do you think it's Tennessee, or do you think it's another game that I did not mention? What are your thoughts on Kentucky possibly being the biggest trap game for South Carolina, and what are your thoughts on the three quarterbacks I mentioned on the show? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or if you listened on an audio podcast app, shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a line underscore SC, and I'll respond to any comments or questions that you have for me as quickly as I see them. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in to today's show. And before I get off real quickly, I want to apologize to all of you for how late Thursday's show came out. I ran into some real serious issues with my laptop, and obviously, I might need to upgrade that pretty soon with the amount of times that that has happened. But again, uh, totally my mistake. On that part, I should have planned for something like that to possibly happen, and I didn't, and that's how you end up getting a show posted early in the afternoon. So totally my bad on that. Promise y'all that's going to be a one-off, and that's not going to happen again in the near future. But either way, thank y'all so much for tuning in once again. Have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend. I will catch y'all on the next show of the Lockdown Gamecocks Podcast.